What if everything we thought we knew about human origins was built on a shaky foundation? Imagine for a moment that one of the most important fossil discoveries in the history of anthropology, the Omo One skeleton, wasn't what we were told it was. That the story of modern humans emerging from Africa over 200,000 years ago, slowly making their way across the globe, had a fatal flaw. What if the very fossil that was supposed to prove this timeline was, in fact, only 9,000 years old? What if it was never buried in ancient layers of Earth, but simply found lying on the surface? And what if the scientists involved in its discovery knew this and pushed a different story anyway? Now let's pause here and zoom out. According to the dominant scientific view, Homo sapiens have been walking the Earth for at least 200,000 years, evolving gradually from earlier hominids. But the Bible presents a radically different story, that the first humans, Adam and Eve, were created less than 10,000 years ago. At first glance, these timelines couldn't be more contradictory. And yet, the proposed age of the Omo One skeleton, if it's truly just 9,000 years old, strangely aligns with the biblical timeline. Could this be a coincidence? Or are we looking at a deeper problem in how we date our past? Which version holds more weight logically? The scientific framework, rooted in layers of sediment and carbon dating, or the theological one, built on ancient texts passed down for millennia? Maybe the answer isn't as black and white as we've been led to believe. Maybe the real mystery lies in the overlap, in the gray area where science and scripture start echoing each other in unexpected ways. This is the mystery of Omo One, a skeleton unearthed near Ethiopia's Omo River in 1967. A find so significant, it promised to anchor the timeline of our species' emergence in Africa. But from the very beginning, there were problems. Contradictory accounts of how and where it was found. Discrepancies in the dating methods used to determine its age and a strange reluctance to revisit the evidence with modern technology. When you start peeling back the layers, the whole thing starts looking less like a clear-cut discovery and more like an elaborate myth, carefully maintained by a scientific community unwilling to question its own assumptions. Let's start with the basic problem. Was Omo One actually found in situ, meaning buried in the original layer of Earth where it had been deposited thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of years ago? Or was it simply a surface find, meaning it had been exposed by natural forces and could have been moved around, making any attempt at dating it unreliable? This might sound like a minor detail, but it's the difference between solid evidence and pure speculation. If a fossil isn't found in situ, then its age cannot be determined with any certainty. And in the case of Omo One, the accounts differ wildly. Carl Butzer, a geologist from the University of Chicago who was on the same expedition, described Omo One as a surface find. Richard Leakey, the famous paleoanthropologist who led the excavation, claimed it was partially in situ. What does that even mean? That some parts were buried and others weren't? If so, which parts? And how does that impact the reliability of dating methods? Here's where things start to get really messy. In 1969, just two years after its discovery, Leakey announced that Omo One was at least 130,000 years old. How did he arrive at this number? A single shell, dated using a method that even the scientists involved warned was unreliable. The shell was sent to a laboratory where geochronologist David Thurber worked. But strangely, Thurber himself refused to be credited for the date. In fact, he explicitly warned against taking the 130,000-year figure too seriously. Yet Leakey pushed it anyway, and soon, it became accepted as fact. The fossil was officially labeled as early Homo sapiens, cementing its place in the out-of-Africa narrative. But here's the thing. Other dating methods produced wildly different results. Carbon-14 testing on freshwater shells from the same site suggested the area was much younger, between 5,000 and 9,000 years old. And then there's the problem of the environment. Omo One was found near the ancient shoreline of a lake that was known to exist around 6,000 to 9,000 years ago. If the skeleton was truly 200,000 years old, it would have been buried under at least 50 meters of sediment, and the lake would have had to magically wash all of that away, revealing the fossil in near-perfect condition. Does that sound likely? And it gets stranger. Nearby, archaeologists found 69 stone tools, a butchered baboon skeleton, a complete flamingo skeleton, and five bone harpoons. 
These harpoons were directly dated to 9,100 years ago. If the tools, the harpoons, and the butchered animal remains were all from around 9,000 years ago, then what are the chances that a 200,000-year-old human just happened to be found in the exact same place? The simplest explanation is usually the right one. Omo-1 was a modern human who lived 9,000 years ago. But that explanation would collapse the entire out-of-Africa timeline, so it was ignored. If the dating methods used on Omo-1 were so unreliable, why did the scientific community cling to them for so long? Because the fossil fit the narrative they wanted to believe. The out-of-Africa theory was already gaining traction, and Omo-1 provided the perfect confirmation. It was a simple, compelling story. Humans evolved in Africa around 200,000 years ago and spread outward, replacing archaic human populations. But what if that's not what happened? What if modern humans didn't emerge from a single Garden of Eden in Africa, but instead developed in multiple locations across the globe? There's a growing body of evidence suggesting that modern human traits appeared in different populations at different times. Fossils in China show features associated with modern humans at dates that challenge the out-of-Africa timeline. Genetic studies suggest that some human populations carry DNA that doesn't fit neatly into the expected migration patterns. And then there's the inconvenient fact that some of the oldest Homo sapiens fossils don't come from East Africa at all. What if human evolution was more complex than a simple migration story? What if instead of a single African origin, humans evolved in interconnected populations spread across Africa, Eurasia, and beyond? The multi-regional hypothesis, once dismissed, is beginning to look more plausible. And the inconsistencies surrounding Omo-1 only add to the doubts about the mainstream narrative. The deeper you dig, the more questions emerge. Why weren't there detailed photographs of Omo-1 when it was discovered? This was 1967, a well-funded expedition with cameras and video equipment. Yet, no visual records exist to prove whether it was in situ or on the surface. Was this just an oversight, or was evidence deliberately withheld? If it was a surface find, then all of the dating estimates become meaningless. And if the age of Omo-1 collapses, so does a major pillar of the out-of-Africa theory. Then there's the preservation mystery. In 1967, another skull was found at a site called Pelvic Corner, just a short distance from where Omo-1 was discovered. This skull was dated to 6,000 years old. But when researchers examined the two fossils under a high-powered microscope decades later, they found something odd. Omo-1 was better preserved. How does a 200,000-year-old skull survive in better condition than one that's only 6,000 years old? The simplest answer? Omo-1 isn't that old. And if Omo-1 isn't 200,000 years old, then what does that say about the rest of the out-of-Africa evidence? How many other fossils have been assigned dates based on assumptions rather than solid science? How many other pieces of the puzzle don't quite fit, but are forced into place anyway? Science is supposed to be about questioning, about re-examining the evidence as new methods become available. Yet when it comes to human origins, certain ideas have become untouchable. The out-of-Africa theory is treated as dogma, and anyone who questions it risks being labeled a conspiracy theorist. But history has shown that scientific consensus is not always right. The story of Omo-1 is a reminder that even the most accepted ideas need to be scrutinized. Because if we get the origins of our own species wrong, what else have we misunderstood about the past?